Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Hey, I got to thinking about this crankshaft thing with the RM125 and uh, <clears throat> this just didn't seem right to me and it took me a little while to figure it out but uh, this is not going to work with a set of V-blocks like I've got. Uh, there's just, you know, I, I just didn't think that that was right, that both of those crankshafts were very similar, and especially the one where I just took it apart. And uh, I got to thinking about that, and it's not going to tell you anything with that rolling, the crankshaft rolling in, the, in these right here with those big wide V, uh, v blocks. And you know, I, I, got to, I got to checking it further out and I was seeing a change. So I went, I thought I'd seen something in a manual somewhere about doing them on these things. And I went to the Kawasaki manual that I've got for the F7. I think it's for the uh, F5, F7, F8, whole bunch of models. But anyway, they show it uh, on a knife type uh, V block. And that's what I think I've got to have. So I've, I've cut up all the material I think that I need to do this. And I'm going to take you along on the assembly. And at the end, uh, we'll just see how, 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 much, uh, how much better it is. And I think it's going to be extremely uh, more efficient. And it's going to show us a lot more. I'm going to build this thing so I can put it in my vise. Maybe a little later on, I may weld a, uh, a, a heavy foot on the bottom of it. But for right now, I just want to get it together and try to uh, and make it so it'll fit in my vise so everything will be uh, substantial enough so it's not going to drop anything. So let me get you overhead and we'll take a look at what I'm proposing here. I just wanted to go through this because I didn't want somebody to make the mistake that I made and think everything was okay. Uh, but when you've got uh, an area this big it's the crankshaft is just going to lay in there and you know basically it's uh, it's just telling you that these uh, that the shafts are round out here um, the, the one way that you could do it was to go to up here and that's going to tell you more because uh, because it's going to show the relationship. But these, for the most part, are kind of rough, and they've got marks in them. You can see how. Oops, I don't know. You can kind of see how things jump a lot when they're on there. So I don't like that. It just doesn't. Uh, I think it would work, but you'd have to have some smooth ones. So instead, uh, what I've done here is I've set up, uh, made these parts here. So this piece here is adjustable. It moves up and down and it'll have this welded on it also. So you've got a, a, a much smaller area. Uh, what I've seen is uh, a knife type uh, apparatus here to do that. Uh, I can sharpen these more if I need to, but I think this is enough. And see, this one I'll be able to raise up and down so that when you have different size shafts, you can kind of uh, compensate for them. And this one over here is going to slide to compensate for the width. See, here's a 360 Yamaha, so that will fit in there too. That's 
probably about as big, you know, a 350, 360, 400 is about as I'll, about as big as I'll ever need. So this will be movable uh, in and out that way. So really what I've got to do is I've got to get these welded on. Actually, I'm going to wait. I'm going to weld everything else up. Then I'm going to set a, uh, a shaft in here so that it'll maintain uh, parallel. And then I'll go ahead and tack those on and try to keep those so that they're parallel with them or with each other. But that's what I'm going to do. This piece down here will fit in my vise. I'll be able to just clamp it down on that. But I just wanted to go over that because uh, that wasn't going to work. And I did actually go, let's see here, out on the end further. Uh, and you could see more, more change. But you're not always going to have that available to you. So there's a little bit more movement out there, but not much. This is just a problem. It's got to be thinner. So we'll go over that again after we get this thing tacked together and we'll see how big a difference this is. Okay, this is the way that I was doing the check originally. <clears throat> and this is, this will not work. See, I've got it zeroed out there. And it just pretty much stays zero. It's not doing anything. So all you're doing is making, you're checking to make sure that these are, uh, uh, are round right here. So then we move it out to the outside. Let me move it to the outside. Okay, I've got it out here on the, uh, the taper, as far as I can go on the taper. And on this side, I'm right at the beginning of the, uh, the threads, right next to the unthreaded portion. And I'm doing that because this is, uh, you know, sometimes these threads are flat or something like that. I'm just trying to get the, the best area on the threads that I can. So let's check this one now. Okay, we're, we're at zero right there on this side. And there's about three and a half. Okay, we're zero right there on this side. And it, it's zero here too. And I get about one thou deflection right there. So I got three and a half and one maybe. It's a far cry from right here at zero or just almost zero. It moves a little bit. It's probably something boogered up on the shaft a little bit. Now let's go over to the, uh, the fixture that I made. Okay, now I'm set up in the fixture that I made and There it is, zero over here, and we've got about two here. So like right there is the most, and I got nine. I'm back to zero here, and I'm at two on this side. So it makes a big difference how wide your, uh, your blades are or your V-blocks, whatever you want to call it. Nine on the mag and two on the clutch side. Okay, here's the fixture that, I'm, that I built. Uh, I've made it adjustable here. So you can have a wider one. Uh, 
Let me just, here's a 360 Yamaha. Actually, it'll fit there, but if, uh, if you want it to go, you know, something's wider, you can make it uh, fit. And on this other end, I've made it adjustable as far as height here. The inside slides up and down. And these are our knife blades here. The reason you need that for up and down is you look at this side here and then look at how big this side is. And yeah, you could put it up here, but you don't always have that. So it's good to have to be able to do some adjustments and that way you know you can get it in there to just about fit the way you want it. Let's see here how to have that like that I think. And uh, that way you can have it the way you want it and uh, try to keep it level. I don't think the level really makes a big difference because it's still going to act the same but you know, I like to I like to try to level out the the crankshaft if I can. So anyhow, uh, this is a big difference between this as far as uh, the how it sits in here. So this is a lesson learned for me. Uh, you know, I I rarely do anything like that. I always do them in the in the uh, lathe. Uh, I've done one, I think, and I didn't like what I saw here then, if I remember right. And I just put it one, I chucked up one side into the, uh, the lathe, just chucked it up, and checked it on the other side. And that, in that case, that told me that everything was... Uh, was as it's supposed to be and it was within tolerance. Uh, I think I was just checking a crank for a gentleman. But, you know, it's getting to the point where you get more and more of these holes that are damaged. And if you put, if they're damaged and you put your centers in there, it's gonna, it's gonna move on you. So you don't want that. And, you know, this way I'll be able to do those without, uh, uh, the ones that are have the damaged holes and uh, shouldn't be any difference in what's what's happening you're still you're getting high you're getting low whatever it is uh, and I always go on the highs so if it's high over here and uh, you know then you just you knock it down to where that's high and then you put it back in here and check it again so it it didn't take very long maybe a couple hours to put this together and uh, it's, uh, I think if you've got a deal like that where you are trying to do it yourself and you don't have a lathe, this is probably your best bet, is just fabricate something with a, uh, uh, closer to a knife edge here. I don't think you'd want uh, terribly sharp. I don't think you could improve on it much more. And, you know, really these are, these are all case hardened here. So it's not going to damage it to run in there. I've, I've gone in here with a file and made that as smooth as I could so that I wouldn't be damaging any crankshafts. But I think this is uh, going to be a big asset to the shop. And uh, I, I learned a very good lesson. And uh, I'm just thankful I didn't send the RM back before... I figured out that there was probably a problem. Uh, although it looked like it was pretty close, uh, when I set it up in here, uh, I, I believe I got three thousandths on one side and four thousandths on the other, which wasn't astronomical, but it would, it would cause a problem. So uh, I was just, I, I kept thinking about this and thinking about it and I knew what I was seeing there was wrong. So sometimes uh, heed your, your inner thoughts and do a little more investigation. Okay guys, there you have it. I just wanted to go over that because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there probably thought I'd lost my mind uh, on this and not, 
not so sure that I didn't. Uh, I, I just, uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but when I was looking at it and doing it, I was thinking, and I just, man, this isn't right, but that's what I'm getting. And later on, I moved, moved uh, the indicators out to the, the very end, and I saw a difference. So that's when I thought, well, I'm going to do a little investigation. I went in some of the other uh, 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 factory manuals and looked around. Most of them show them between centers. But I did find one that just looked, it, it just showed a knife edge. It didn't show the, the uh, piece of equipment or anything like that. It just showed a knife edge holding the, the uh, crankshaft up and then your indicators on the end. So, you know, it just, it happens to all of us. I, I, I mess up a lot, uh, but I can edit it out. Uh, in this case, I couldn't edit that out because I had already put it up before it dawned on me that this just wasn't right and started investigating some other stuff. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this video in with the playlist on the RM125 crankshaft. And uh, although I didn't show how to make this, uh, it's just square tubing. You can kind of tell by uh, what I've done there, how I did it. And uh, I just cut a, cut a bunch of stuff up, welded it together, and uh, it works. You could be a little more elaborate. You could make a stand. And I may do something different later on. But right now, I can get it in my vise, and that, that works good for me. So, hey, thanks for going along on the ride, and we'll see you next video.